Thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. I also rise to speak on the uh, Senate Environment and Communications Reference Committee uh, inquiry into factory freezer trawlers, uh, which I uh, attended uh, as the Greens, the Greens representative. Uh, the Greens have campaigned uh, consistently since 2012 against uh, the arrival and the operation of large factory freezer vessels, uh, often known as super trawlers, in Australian waters. We've always opposed them. We've been consistent in our position. Uh, the key reason for that is the threat that they pose to marine life, especially to marine mammals, uh, and we believe that there is uncertainty in the science. We've never questioned uh, the quality of the science that's been done, but we have questioned the quantity of the science that's been done. The fishery, the small pelagic fishery that have been targeted by uh, these large freezer vessels uh, have had problems in the past. It went into decline off uh, Tasmania and South East Australia 12 years ago. Uh, some scientists even say collapse. Uh, and then suddenly, uh, although the fishery hadn't been accessed for 10 years, no data had been collected, suddenly uh, we had a, a robust, viable fishery able to be accessed by some of the largest factory freezer vessels uh, in, in, in the world. Uh, so the Greens have always been concerned about the specific acute impacts called localised depletion uh, on uh, the species that live off the small pelagic fish, such as seals, dolphins, penguins, a, a number of finfish, which of course is the reason that wreck fishers in this country have, uh, have been so outspoken. Uh, in their opposition to these large factory freezer vessels. Now, I note uh, in this uh, Senate committee report, uh, Acting Deputy President, that uh, the coalition centres have put in a dissenting report. Uh, I will express uh, my thoughts on this. It is disappointing they put in a dissenting report. This is a very well written report. It's a long report that includes a lot of information, including scientific information. It acknowledges it acknowledges the scientists that have contributed to this debate. Uh, it acknowledges the Fisheries Management Authority, uh, and uh, while it clearly point out issues with their management of the small pelagic fishery, uh, it also acknowledges that Australian fisheries are the best managed fisheries in the world. But that doesn't make them by any means perfect. Now, this super trawler, the Geelong Star, that's somewhere off Cape Town at the moment, and I understand has changed its flag from an Australian flag to a foreign vessel. I also understand it's not coming back, acting deputy president, uh, and that the reason it left was a commercial decision. A commercial decision that they didn't see any long-term future for them here, uh, accessing the small pelagic fishery in Australian waters. The key question is why not? Well, we know from the data that we've been provided that they haven't met anywhere near their quota catch, their allowable catch. Uh, in other words, they haven't been able to find the fish. Now, you may have been able to mount an argument 12 months ago that the dolphin exclusion regulations put on the boat prevented it or precluded it from operating in certain parts of the ocean. You could argue that, but that has been off. That regulation was lifted uh, some time ago. Now, the clear fact is this boat hasn't caught the fish that it set out to catch, and uh, I question whether it's been able to find the fish, Acting Deputy President. And this is a very important issue to me, because I've raised issues around uncertainty uh, in the assessments of the stock and where those stocks are. Uh, and if this boat hasn't been able to find the fish, uh, then it clearly suggests that maybe we didn't get it right, uh, and that this boat has gone off to other places to fish on the basis that uh, the regulations in this country were too severe, they've lobbied, to have regulations removed. We know that for a fact. They had the night fishing ban removed. Uh, they've lobbied to have a second AFMA observer removed off the boat. Uh, they've lobbied to have the exclusion zones for dolphins removed. Uh, that They clearly see Australian fisheries as being too highly regulated for them. They haven't been able to find the fish. Uh, also, a uh, question whether their markets in Africa, uh, where they're selling the fish, those of us who understand economics in this chamber, and that's the decision this boat uh, operator and the shareholders who own the company have made to come to Australia to access and exploit the small pelagic fishery and sell this fish uh, to uh, Africa. I question whether their markets in Africa are sustainable. Uh, I'd like to see the data on what kind of price they're getting for their fish and what kind of volumes they're selling there. I understand that market is not uh, highly profitable uh, and there's been issues with that. Uh, that's another question I have hanging over this. 
Uh, so those uh, who have come out and said that you know, some kind of populist movement in this country has killed the Super Trawler, this is a decision made by the operators of this vessel, that they didn't feel that they were making enough money in Australia and they've gone to fish elsewhere. And we need to get to the bottom of that if we're to truly understand why. And I think it's really important uh, that whether AFMA do it now uh, we can get some more statements from the company, that we actually get that information to add to this piece of work that we have here from the Senate, uh, which is a long piece of work and very balanced. So the key recommendation is that the government ban uh, factory freezer vessels, large factory freezer vessels, uh, midwater trawls from operating in the small plastic fishery. And I note in the first page of the Coalition Senator's dissenting report that they disagree with that recommendation. And they spend nearly two pages talking about input controls, Acting Deputy President. That is, uh, things that actually limit your fishing uh, effort, uh, such as the size of your boat, uh, are not a basis for fishing regulation. Well, here's, here's the point. The Coalition banned, banned super trawlers, boats over 130 metres. A clear uh, input control. We want to take this a step further, and the Senate has agreed that we need to ban all fact large factory freezer vessels operating in the small plastic fishery. The government could never explain to stakeholders when they sat down with them why they, got, they were prepared to ban boats over 130 metres and on what basis and not boats 100 metres that had smaller uh, factory freezers. It didn't make sense. So the government can't uh, make the point that it has in this dissenting report and make the point publicly that they don't believe uh, the, gov the Senate or any future government should ban factory freezer vessels when they've done exactly the same thing themselves. Exactly the same thing themselves. And if, there's, if they're claiming there's no scientific basis to a ban on factory freezer vessels, they don't believe in the precautionary principle, they don't believe there's any uncertainty in these fisheries at all, that any harm is being done to the marine environment, then why ban boats that are bigger and more efficient if this is all about efficiency. Well, even a 100 metre boat, I don't think uh, Senator Back through your acting deputy president, was efficient. The boat didn't make any money, it's gone. They couldn't exploit this fishery the way that they had expected. And I question whether they were able to find the fish stocks. And I do know someone fairly learned who said they needed to spend more time here to find the fish stocks. Uh, but, you know, what company is going to tie up their money keeping an asset uh, in, another, in another country when there's other fisheries they can go off and plunder? And it seems that that, that is what they have done. So uh, I would uh, support uh, Senator Urquhart's uh, final comments there. Uh, good riddance. Uh, I don't want to see any factory freezer vessels back into this country. Uh, this is a, the biggest environmental campaign I've seen uh, in my time in the Senate. And it's not just environmental campaigners, it's also recreational fishing groups who feel their voice hasn't been heard, that they feel they've had a say in the management of this fishery. And, and believe me, um, while, while environmental campaigners have stood side by side with rec fishing groups on this issue, we do, we do uh, tend to have some very robust discussions on other issues, uh, and we don't believe they're, they're, they're perfect by any means. Sometimes their catch can be unsustainable as well, and we've always had that open conversation with them. But in this instance, they are asking for their voice to be heard. Uh, they target the finfish, they all spend a lot of money on their boats, it's a big part of their life. Uh, it's a great joy to them to be able to go out and catch fish uh, and this boat posed a risk and a threat to them that they felt was never properly assessed. There's been a number of attempts by government over the years to negotiate with them, such as exclusion zones for this trawler. They also failed. Uh, there's been attempts there to try and incorporate stakeholder feedback in this fishery that haven't been successful. Uh, uh, if you go on the principle that there's no problem with this kind of thing, uh, unless there's any harm being done. In other words, no harm done, no problem. Uh, if someone wants to spend their money, let them go fish, let them exploit this fishery. Well, I would argue, uh, as a Green, and as someone who loves the ocean, deeply loves the ocean, that killing nine dolphins in your first two weeks of operation is doing harm. 50 seals of different varieties have been caught by this boat in the last 12 months. Numerous albatrosses and all sorts of bycatch, including a whale shark. Uh, so you can't argue that this is not doing any harm. There is uncertainty uh, in the science, as you would expect, for a fishery as complex as this. Uh, the precautionary principle uh, should be adopted, and I uh, wholeheartedly uh, endorse the Senate's recommendations in this report for a ban on these vessels 
and I would like to see uh, that properly regulated and properly enforced in legislation.